Welcome everyone to Gamer Meld. Before I get started, I do want to apologize for not getting my Cyber Monday video out. I was actually trying to spend some time with my girlfriend and it took a little longer than expected. With that said, I'll have my top 5 deals in the description below for anyone still looking. As an example, the mouse I use is my daily driver. The Razer Death Adder Elite is $30 off right now. Okay, let's get into the news. First up, it looks like Intel may not be moving to 10 nanometers next year after all. At least not in their consumer line if this rumor is accurate. And that means we're looking at yet another plus added to the scale. How they're able to keep upping efficiency and power to their 14 nanometer node is tough to say. Oh wait, they likely aren't. Instead, they just add a couple more cores, which is what today's first story implies. Originally found on a Taiwanese forum, a user stated that Intel is going 10 cores with their next generation CPUs and they'll be sticking to that tried and true 14 nanometer design. Now, I know a random commenter on a forum isn't the most accurate of sources, but remember that other countries have access to certain meetings that many times don't make their way to the US until much later. Plus, I honestly don't see this being too far-fetched. Intel won't have their 10 nanometer process ready until the end of next year, while Zen 2 base CPUs are expected around the middle of the year. And really, all they can do at this point is add more cores. The next generation CPUs are supposedly codenamed Comet Lake S, and while it wasn't said, I have little doubt it'll have the same IPC with lower initial clocks to make the TDP look the same, but it won't be. Next up for today, while sticking to Intel, the company looks like they'll be launching their ninth generation mobile chips soon. In a recent product data sheet update for Lenovo's IdeaPad S530, they added three processors that might say 8th generation, but aren't. They're low-power U-chips and are the i3-9130U, the i5-9250U, and the i7-9550U. There isn't too much more here, but given what we've seen so far, I mostly just expect some slightly higher clocks. As for release, it doesn't say, but it'll certainly be announced within the next couple months, given this is already on the company's data sheet. Lastly for today, NVIDIA's real-time ray tracing will be getting its second supported game, the MMO Justice. Unfortunately, it's mostly only found in China, but don't worry, because it looks to have the same frame rate drops RTX is becoming known for. I mean, you can see that this scene doesn't look too good whenever it comes to FPS, and there's no comparison with it off. Then again, this scene doesn't show ray tracing off either, and doesn't look too bad. Either way, RTX is looking to be a pretty poor implementation overall, and it doesn't help that you can't use SLI while ray tracing is turned on. To top it off, NVIDIA is likely to axe their Pascal lineup before long, so cheaper GPUs are going to be tough to come by. Now, before I get to all the hate comments, I do understand that NVIDIA took a major risk to bring a serious jump in graphical fidelity. Plus, it's their first generation. But these cards are made for ray tracing. They, of course, specifically designed for it. And they're so expensive because of it. And it doesn't help that we've been fed this faster frames, higher resolution bit for years now. It just makes this a really hard pill to swallow. So while that does it for today, what do you think about Intel going 10 cores? Let me know down in the comments below. Also, GamerMail just got to 70,000 subscribers. It's incredible, and I'm to this day still shocked at how fast this channel has grown and all the support I've gotten. Thank you all so much. Also, I'll be announcing the giveaway winners for last month's giveaway really soon here, so stay tuned for that. And as always, have a great day.